Everyone is looking for ways to deal with the $4 billion budget gap uh, here in New York State. We heard the, budget, the governor's budget address yesterday. And uh, last week, the federal government, much maligned in yesterday's budget agreement, and, and, in, some, and in some ways uh, rightly maligned, but they also last week gave us an opportunity for big savings here in New York State. Our budget is about $160 billion. About $60 billion of it is Medicaid, what we pay in New York State uh, for Medicaid. Our New York State Medicaid bill is bigger than Texas and Florida combined, even though both of those states are bigger than New York State now in terms of population. So we should be looking for every opportunity to save on Medicaid. And the federal government has given us an opportunity now. Rules changed last week that say now a state may, if the state chooses, require uh, a work requirement to receive Medicaid because Medicaid was set up in 1965 as a safety net. And what has happened over the last 50 years, it's become, for some people, a way of life. And it's extremely expensive. Uh, very few people who get on Medicaid get off of it. Uh, of, in the United States, about 75 million Americans are on Medicaid. And of that group, 25 million are healthy adults uh, without children. And of those 25 million, 10 million of them aren't working. So what the federal government has said is, if as a state you want to require work, uh, education in exchange, you have to go to school, get your GED, even caring for a relative counts. It's called community engagement. So it's not straight you have to go out and work and earn a paycheck. Uh, even rehab counts as community engagement in exchange. So if you go to alcohol or drug rehab, if you're a person who needs that, um, that counts as community engagement and that could be in New York State, should we, should we pass the legislation that I'm working on, uh, one, it will get people going, it will get people back in the workforce, get people out of the house, and ultimately it will get people off of Medicaid, uh, which will be a huge savings in our state budget. But it also would help people who are not on Medicaid, people who get their insurance through their employer or, or pay for it as an individual, because what happens is Medicaid is terrible at reimbursing doctors, pharmacists, and, and medical care providers. In some cases, the medical care provider loses money on a Medicaid patient, but they're not in the business of losing money, right? The, the doctor has to pay off his student loans. He has to pay for, to keep the lights on and for the overhead. So what they do is, to make up for the loss on Medicaid or the very slim margin in Medicaid, what they'll do is they'll increase the cost to the private uh, insurance company. And that increases your premiums, it increases my premiums. So it's a double-edged sword. We're costing the taxpayers money, and then we're increasing their, the cost of their health insurance. So we're given an opportunity by the federal government to, uh, to make this better, to save money. We should take them up on it. A handful of states are already working on it, uh, and we should be one of those states. And there's a real opportunity for savings there. And we won't have to increase uh, taxes, or as the governor said, institute revenue raisers, whatever that means. A euphemism if ever there was one. There are ways to save money. This isn't cruel. In fact, it's actually better for the, for the individual. If somebody's healthy, and they're, uh, you know, they're on Medicaid and they're not doing anything, you're actually doing them a favor by forcing them to go out into the workforce, forcing them to improve their education, forcing them to uh, uh, take care of a substance abuse problem, if that's the case. So uh, it's a win-win, something we need to do here in New York State.